الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب عليه الصلاة والسلام سورة يونس آية 15 and 16 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا تتلى عليهم آياتنا بينات قال الذين لا يرجون لقاءنا ائتي بقرآن غير هذا أو بدله قل ما يكون لي أن أبدله من تلقاء نفسي إن أتبع إلا ما يوحى إلي إني أخاف إن عصيت ربي عذاب يوم عظيم قل لو شاء الله ما تلوته عليكم ولا أدراكم به فقد لبثت فيكم عمرا من قبله أفلا تعقلون صدق الله العلي العظيم In this verse Surah Yunus chapter 10 verse number 15 وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا بَيِّنَاتِ When the Prophet rehearses or rehearses the words of God, the words of this book, the Holy Quran, in a very plain and a clear language, bayinat, very obvious, very plain. Qala alladhina la yarjuna liqa'ana, those who have no hope in meeting us tomorrow on the Day of Judgment, those who disbelieve in the Day of Judgment, they say the following. They say the following. Bring us another book. We don't like this book. This book, there is too much restrictions, prohibitions in this book. Don't do this. Don't say that. Don't approach this. Don't worship this. So please bring us another book. This book does not work for us. اِئْتِ بِقُرْآنٍ غَيْرِ هَذَا أَوْ بَدِّلْ Change it. قُلْ مَا يَكُونُ لِي أَنْ أُبَدِّلَهُ مِنْ تِلْقَاءِ نَفْسِي Say to them, Ya Rasulullah, say to your community that I cannot change the book out of my own desire. This is something that has been given to me by God. This is the revelation of God. This is not something that I have written. قُلْ مَا يَكُونُ لِي أَنْ أُبَدِّلَهُ مِنْ تِلْقَاءِ نَفْسِي إِنْ أَتَّبِعُ إِلَّا مَا يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ I only follow what God has revealed to me. So this is not something out of my desire. What I have in this book and what I am telling you is from this book which is the revelation of God. Now, few points in this regard. Point number one, some of the people who are stubborn, who are the stubborn? The stubborn who do not, those who do not want to listen to the truth. The stubborn are those who follow their own desire. They don't follow the truth. They don't follow justice. They don't follow logic. They follow their own desire. And someone can be stubborn who is two years old, or 10 years old, or 20 years old, or 40 years old, or 60 years old, or even 90 years old. Sometimes people think that only children are stubborn, they don't listen. No, not necessarily only children. We have some adult, some youth, some middle age, old age, men, women, some of them are 
non-educated, some of them are very educated, some of them are poor, some of them are wealthy, they become stubborn. They don't want, they don't like to listen to the logical discourse. They have an idea in their mind and they defend this idea at any cost. This is inad, stubbornness. This is Inad. So those people, some of them, they want the book, this book, the Holy Quran, to follow them. They don't want to follow the book. Are you with me? This is the difference. People who have good intention, people who are submissive to God, submissive to God, they listen to the Quran. But people who are non-submissive to God, they want the Quran to listen to them. They want God to listen to them and follow them. They don't want to follow God. One time I was sitting in an airplane. Next to me, there was a, an American sitting next to me. He asked me, are you a religious minister? I said, yes. What religion? I said to him, Islam. He said, I have a problem with Islam. I said, only one problem? It's good if you have one problem. He said, but the problem is very big. I said, what is it? He said, in Islam, you advocate, in your religion, you advocate submissiveness to God. You surrender to God. You submit yourself completely to God. Absolute submissiveness. And I don't like this. This is not good. I'm a free man. I don't want someone to control me. I said to him, you don't want to be submissive to God, but I am sure you are submissive to your own wife. You listen to your wife. Your wife controls you. Don't tell me I don't want to be submissive to God. In this life, you are submissive to the law. Aren't you submissive to the law? Can you drive the way you like here? You can't do that. There is a speed limit. Can you do anything you like in the community, in the society, even at your own house, that you own it with your own money? Sometimes the association, it tells you what to do and what not to do, although you own the house. So you have to listen. Second, God is not a dictator. When God tells you don't drink, it's for you, not against you. When God tells you don't gamble, it is for you, not against you. When God tells you not to break the law, not to abuse yourself, this is for you, not against you. So he's not a dictator. He's not a dictator. So there were some people always, at any time, they want this book to follow their desire. They don't want to follow the Quran or God. This is an example in verse number 15, an example of them. وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا بَيِّنَاتٍ قَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَاءَنَا اِئْتِ بِقُرْآنٍ غَيْرِ هَذَا أَوْ بَدِّلْ We don't like this book. Change it. We don't like this book. There were a group who came to the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca. They said to him, Ya Muhammad, we would follow you provided that you bring a book that respects our idols. <laughs> because in your book, your book is very offensive to our idols, Asnam. So go change it. Bring a book that respects our idols, then we would listen to you. Then we would listen to you. The Prophet said, first of all, this is revelation from Allah. Second, idol worshipping, idolatry, and Islam, they do not get along. One of them is, Islam is based on monotheism, tawheed. Idolatry is based on what? Polytheism. Shirk, and they don't get along. They don't get along. 
When you worship idols, you submit yourselves to the idols. I submit myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a big difference. There is a huge difference. So I cannot change this book. It's not up to me. I have given this book to pass it to you. Not to change it. Not to modify this book. Not to modify it. And we have the example of this group in all societies, at all times. Even now, I have spoken with some Muslims who say, I wish the Quran is modified, becomes like the Bible. We change, for instance, hijab is not mentioned here, zakat is not mentioned, jihad. Make it American-friendly book, you know. <laughs> we have this example. Those are the Muslims. The non-Muslims, Israel, 50 years ago, they sent a delegation to Jamal Abdel Nasser, the Egyptian president, back in the 60s, saying to him that we will give you money. There are verses that anti-Semitic in this book. Remove them. Modify this book. Because we want to create, build bridges with the Muslims. As long as you have these verses that they think it is anti-Semitic. It's not anti-Semitic. It's not. It's not anti-Semitic. But they think it's anti-Semitic. Anti-Jews. It's not anti-Jews. So remove them from the Quran. And we are ready to give at that time, 50, 60 years ago, millions of dollars. And we will re re reproduce the book. We will reprint it in Israel and distribute this book. If you are worried about the cost, huh? if you are worried about the cost of the printing, we will sponsor that. See, we have these mentalities. When they don't like something, let's change it. Rather than trying to understand it, understand what Allah is saying, and accept it, and try to change themselves, they come to the book and they want to ch change it. And this is why, my friends, you know, now you know the difference between Quran and other books. Other books have been changed. Have been changed. The Old Testament, the New Testament, the Torah, the Injil, the Gospels. They were changed because of the desire of the people. Because people who are influential, they don't want to follow the rules, the rules of God set for them by God. Even today in the church in America, America and elsewhere. Same-sex marriage today in many churches, it has been blessed and accepted and they perform it in the church. Same-sex marriage. While in their own book, if they read the book, it is banned. It is considered a sin. The same thing with the Jewish community. There is a rabbi in Los Angeles. I read this article in the Los Angeles Times. Despite his congregation rejecting this, he says, no, there is no problem with me. Today we live in a different world, in an open world. So we have to accept this. And I am ready to solemnize the same-sex marriage in, in the synagogue, in the Jewish synagogue. They change it. Why? Because some people, they don't like it. So what? They don't like it. Let them change themselves. Can we say to the American government, I don't like this law. Change it because I don't like it. Me and my family. Would they listen to me? They say, get lost. You have to respect the law of the land. So... This problem existed during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Some people, they commercialized religion. They thought that they can change the divine law by their money, by their influence, by their politics. So the Prophet had to listen to them and bring a law, a modified law, that serves their own narrow interests. Allah says, I don't do that. 
I cannot never it's up to me ما يكون لي أن أبدله من تلقاء نفسي إن إن أتبع إلا ما يوحى إليه This is what I am telling you I have been instructed by Allah to follow this to follow these strict rules you have to respect it try to change yourself try to look at what you are doing and find your faults and change yourself so why they want to change the book where is it the Quran gives the answer very beautiful Allah says those who do not believe in the Akhirah it's a big problem because the one who does not believe in the Akhirah in the hereafter it means he does not believe in God it means he does not believe in the entire religion furthermore it means that he or she do not believe in the accountability and responsibility just like the American friend in the airplane who told me, I don't like Islam because I don't like to follow someone. They don't like to be responsible. People who do not believe in Akhirah, they don't like the spirit of responsibility. They want to be free in their desires, in their actions, in their behavior. They want to be free. So they don't believe in the Akhirah because Akhirah teaches us the first thing we learn from the belief in the hereafter, in the day of judgment, that we are responsible for everything we say and everything we do. We are responsible. Today, what did you do today? You are accountable for it. Whether you did that in public, in a private, whether you said something, whether you saw something, whether you heard something, whether you reacted to something, you are accountable. You will see it right before your eyes. وَكُلَّ insanin. Allah says in the Holy Quran, every individual, كُلَّ insanin, أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ We bring his book, his file, it is attached to his neck. Your file of the FBI, the intelligence service, they bring it, everything you did, they attach it to your neck on the day of judgment. And then we bring that book on the day of judgment, we open it for him and we say to him, Read what you did in this life. Look at what you did in this life for eight years. Look into this book. اقرأ كتابك كفى بنفسك اليوم عليك حسيبا حسيب means controller. Someone who holds you accountable. You will be accountable for what you did. And you will hold yourself responsible. You yourself on that day you hold yourself responsible. You don't need someone to hold you responsible. You, you're going to do that for yourself. This is why when we believe in the Akhirah, we become good people. Because we know there is a price. There is a price for everything we say and everything we do. I have a friend who came to America and he he got a credit card for the first time in his life. You know, back home, you carry cash with you. Always you pay cash. Nobody pays with a credit card. And when the cash is over, alhamdulillah, you don't purchase anything. You wait until you get some money. Here in this country, you have in your wallet, small card, very small. Wherever you go, you swipe the card and they charge So he got the credit card and he was so happy. He thought this is civilization, modernity. He's very civilized now. Happy that he has a small card in his pocket. So he kept going and purchasing things. Left and right, left and right, left and right. 
until the end of the month he gets the bill wow what's this he almost had a heart attack when he saw the bill he, he tells me he says I looked at the bill wow is this real yeah and he didn't keep he didn't keep the receipts you know he threw them away so he forgot what he purchased on the day of judgment it will be the same here we speak left and right we act left and right we do this and we do that left and right on the day of judgment the book says you did this all these things there is a price for everything we did there is a price nothing can be can get away with God's judgment and God's justice and God's accountability sometimes here we throw words left and right we abuse people we accuse them we tell lies and we think nothing happened but these are recorded in a book you will see everything you said everything sometimes we say things we forget we abuse people verbally physically emotionally and then we forget two days later we forget God does not forget God does not forget so the belief in the Akhirah keeps me under control I know I cannot escape punishment so if I do something bad I have to resort immediately to restoration I have to fix the damage I did to myself and to others immediately I should not wait until I die until death it is too late too late in attabi'u illa ma yuha ilay inni akhafu in asitu rabbi adaba yawman azim the prop the prophet tells them listen even me who's the messenger of God the closest one to God if I commit a sin and I change one single verse in this book I will be punished inni akhafu in asita rabbi adab 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 azim adab yawm azim I fear God would hold me responsible and he will punish me on that day so I have no right to change anything in this book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse about the Prophet some people they have suspicion that maybe the Prophet he put this out of his desire he put this inserted this verse this law this injunction Allah says if this man Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if he fabricates taqawwal means fabricates out of himself fabricate some statements on my behalf God says on my behalf we would hold him with his right arm it's a metaphor metaphor this is a metaphor we will cut off his jugular vein we will destroy him this man the man that we love him so much if one day he dares to say something wrong on behalf of God he will be punished immediately immediately <laughs> so the Prophet does not say anything out of his own desire whatever he says then number 16 and I conclude قُلْ لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا تَلَوْتُهُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَا أَدْرَاكُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ لَبِثْتُ فِيكُمْ عُمُرًا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ The Prophet says to his community, this book that God has sent you, it's for your goodness and your interest and your salvation. It's not for God's benefit. God is not benefiting from sending the book to you. God is not opening a business called religion and he's a profiting out of this business you are the one who are profiting Allah says the hadith hadith al-Qudsi Ya ibadi 
ما خلقتكم لأربح عليكم بل خلقتكم لتربح عليه My servants I did not create you to make a profit out of you I created you so you make a profit out of me You make a profit out of me To get my blessing, my guidance, my mercy We are making a profit out of God He's not making any profit He's ghani He's ghani And this is exactly what he said to Musa One day God said to Musa, Oh Musa, tell your community, Bani Israel, tell them. Tell them if the entire people of the globe, they reject God and they disbelieve in God, God would not be hurt. Don't think God will sit there, Oh, nobody is worshipping me today, I'm sad. Nobody is paying his zakat or fasting. He would not do that. One day God did exist. And none of us existed. None of us. No church, no temple, no synagogue, no. None. He didn't feel lonely. He didn't feel lonely. God is not like us. God is not an attention seeker. He's not surviving on us. We are surviving on him. We need him. He, he's, he's ghani, self-sufficient. This is the main point when I discuss with the Christian friends about Jesus I said to them, listen, listen, the difference between Islam and Christianity, I can epitomize this in one single sentence. In Islam, we believe God is self-sufficient. God is self-sufficient, Ghani. So God cannot be Jesus because Jesus is not self-sufficient. Jesus needs to eat. He needs to sleep. He needs to use the bathroom. He needs to talk to people. He feels lonely. Jesus is, is, a, is not the Son of God, neither God. He's a human being. Yes, divinely inspired by God, sent by God, messenger of God, holy man. That's right. But he's not God. God is different. God is self-sufficient. God does not need anything, including himself. If you read Dua al-Imam al Hussein on the day of Arafat, just eight days ago, nine days ago, Dua, the beautiful Dua supplication of Imam Hussein, in that dua, there is a piece, a sentence that says, Ilahi, you don't even need yourself, let alone me. He's self-sufficient. He's self-sufficient. So here the Prophet says, this book is for you. And God, he could have, he could have not sent this book to you. Yes, as he's guiding you, he had the freedom of choice not to send you any guidance. So when he decided to send this book, it was for you, not against you. This is for you. You are not doing him a favor. He's doing you a favor by sending this book. And then he says, some of them said to him, Ya Muhammad, this book is your work. Don't say this is the work of God. The Prophet is saying, فَقَدْ لَبِثْتُ فِيكُمْ عُمُرًا I lived among you for 40 years. You never heard in these 40 years, you never heard any sentence, anything of this book for 40 years. All of a sudden, at the age of 40, I started giving you the book. So if this was my, my work, I authored this book, I compiled this book. Why you did not hear anything about it for up to 40 years. Why? This means that this, this is not my book. This is revelation of Allah and Allah sent me to you at the age of 40. فَقَدْ لَبِثْتُ فِيكُمْ عُمُرًا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ And inshallah we will continue on Surah Yunus in the upcoming weeks.